is ours for the taking. Ahoy, mateys. Now it's time for game four of the tournament number three finals between HMS Grand Temple UPS and Kill That UPS Fleet. So after a crazy game three, Kill That UPS has stayed alive and they're down in the series two to one now. So still playing for their life in the tournament from here on out. But we'll see how this game goes. So game four, let's see who goes first. Red for GT, black for Dragon. Dragon goes first. Just like in games one and two when they lost, although a lot of that's just due to the treasure distribution. So, okay, so they'll go first. They'll place the first island. They will vote for Isles of Fire to be used. So GT votes against that. So we'll roll off. GT gets their, their vote. So no Isles of Fire. So therefore, I'm just gonna use all Gale Force 9 islands. And since there's no mysterious islands, I'm not gonna go random for the selection. So actually, I'm just gonna put them off to the side a little bit and uh, start placing. So, so Dragon Fleet goes first, no Isles of Fire. So they're not too happy about either of those things, I guess, but whatever. Um, they're gonna place an island in the southwest corner. And now the GT Fleet is gonna get started about 4L. Maybe a little less, probably about 4L away from that one. So go northeasterly direction here. You want to start filling in the map. You don't want everything on the edge because it'll that would probably make it generally easier for the enemy fleet to put islands 6L apart. So they're gonna go a little bit more towards the middle. And Dragon Fleet is gonna place their third down in the southeast corner. We're gonna go 6L. That's four. Five, six, I'm gonna go right there in the corner. So, yeah, turn it a tiny bit. That way a ship can't get through here, but they can get through on the south side. So, now GT Fleet is gonna place their uh, second island. Probably gonna go 4L from the two existing right here, or north of the first one. So we'll go Probably something a little less than 4L, probably about right there. And this one's a little less than 4L, so it's fine. They're okay with that. And they get to place the last one. That's cool for them, I guess. Um, yeah, so Dragon, um, they'll probably go still, still, still go 6L away, I think. Um, we'll go 6L away up here. And then go due north of this one. And go in the corner, basically. Um, because they know, well, they know they might get placed there, but I think they're okay with that. Um, I guess they could hedge their bets a little bit. So they go 6L here, the enemy is more likely to place them there. The enemy might place the last island down here, which we saw in a different game this series. And they did lose that game. Um, so actually, yeah, I think, I think kill that UPS, since their home island location is chosen first and by the enemy, by the opponent, I think they're not going to go max distance. I think they're going to preserve, I think they're going to let the islands be a little closer. They'll probably go about 4L here. Um, Cause they know there's definitely room here to place one more than 3L. You know, they can, the GT fleet can place the last one down here. That would be almost the exact same setup we saw in one of the games they lost going first. So we're going to avoid that same setup. So now GT gets to place the last island. I think they're still gonna put it down there and probably put the dragon fleet there. Other options to go maybe over here or even this way, but they kind of like that as a potential dragon fleet home island. If they didn't, well, yeah, they could also put it here or in the Southwest. Either of those corner islands would be a decent spot to put the enemy as well. But I think they do want to put them in the North. They're gonna, we're gonna go here, basically, to make sure it's at least 3L. Yeah. Okay. Untwist it a little bit. And then make sure. Yep, it's about 3L from that one. All right. So there's our island setup. Now we'll get to terrain. Dragon Fleet is player one. They're gonna vote for one. And GT UPS, they want a bunch of whirlpools. They're gonna vote for six per player. So we're gonna roll off to see who gets what they want for the terrain roll. <clears throat> okay, tied at two for the first one. So roll again. 
On the reroll, the GT fleet wins five to two. So as usual, uh, we're gonna place a bunch of terrain. They keep winning that roll, which has been relatively beneficial for them in the series. So, um, so they're gonna place, well, they don't place first. The other fleet, Dragon Fleet will place first. They're gonna plop down a reef and then I'll get the whirlpools going for GT. So, um, yeah, the other fleet's basically gonna start plopping reefs in between islands here. And then definitely gonna see some whirlpools for GT UPS. We're gonna start those right now, actually. Um, probably put one right there. Actually, no, probably right here, actually. Yeah, that's fine. And then another reef for the place by the Dragon Fleet. Place it, I think right there, it looks good. Kind of block that lane a little bit. And then, so GT UPS, we're gonna place one, um, let me place one here, I think. Yeah, because then a reef, with the size of a reef, it's hard to put one in between the whirlpool on either of these islands without getting with an S of the whirlpool, so you wouldn't be able to place it right in between. Now, third reef, placed by Dragon Fleet. Um, probably gonna go, um, probably gonna go in between these two. Yeah, it's kind of a reef whirlpool counter game. We've seen that in the first few games as well of this series. And GTUPS is now gonna place one down here. Yeah. It's going to be hard to fit a reef right in between. So they'll go there for their third whirlpool. Fourth reef. Pop one. Yeah, so some of, the, some of them will have reefs right in between and some won't, basically. That's how it's going to work out. Either way, though, with six whirlpools, or six terrain per player, you're going to be able to cover, cover the board pretty good with whirlpools. So they'll continue that here with this one. Go on S away. That reef. Actually, they might go. They might go here, actually. Then they could maybe get coverage to all three of those islands. Yeah. Yeah, they like that. That's going to be good for them, I think, for the GT fleet. So now we go fifth round. Uh, I'm going to do another reef for the, the dragon fleet. Uh, I think they'll go. I think they'll go off this coast here. Um, okay, and then probably one more whirlpool for the GT fleet. I think uh, they'll go up here. Yeah, they should spot one here too. I think so. Yeah. And then last train placed by the Dragon Fleet. Um, they'll go. Yeah, they don't need icebergs. I don't think. Yeah. All right, they're gonna go with a reef. Probably place it here. In that lane, um, actually, um, yeah, I guess so. I don't think they can fit it. They can't fit. They can't really fit it between these other options. They could go over here, but they'd rather try this. Actually, yeah, they're gonna go. Make it harder from the whirlpool to get here rather than island to island. They're gonna block the whirlpool more so than the sea lane. I think that might work better. All right, there's that. And then I think, so now that's, yeah, five whirlpools, five reefs, or six reefs. Yeah, I think GT UPS, they still want a fog bank, so I think they will hold out and place their last terrain as a fog bank. Um, and the question is where. They think, they think they're probably gonna put Dragon here. I think they still want that. And then they might end up in a corner as a result, maybe. Uh, so they're gonna put a fog bank somewhere in the south here. Probably in this open area here, I think. Because then it's like relatively close to three different islands. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Sure. Okay. Similar terrain meta to the first few games of the series. So not too surprising. And with that, you get to choosing home islands. So player two is HMS GT UPS. They will indeed place the Dragon Fleet in far north. So their home island up there, put them farther away from all the other stuff. Proxy Patagonia is HMS Ryan, just as usual uh, for the Dragon Fleet. Both fleets use Patagonia. 
and I have Aina. Looks like she'll be able to get to Whirlpool on the first turn. I don't think they will because of what happened in game two. Um, they don't want a repeat of that, so they're probably not going to explore. Um, I think they're going to try to let HMS GTA deal with negatives on her own. They don't. They don't want to risk um, Hyena getting wrecked or uh, having problems with the distribution. Um, you could actually calculate the odds. I was thinking about that this morning because there's five negatives in the Dragon Fleet that they're contributing, but then the revealers in the other fleet are essentially negatives for the Dragon Fleet, as we saw in game two. So the Hyena has a seven out of 16 chance uh, for any given coin of finding something bad that she doesn't want to find. So with four coins per island, I think those odds are pretty bad that she'll find something she doesn't want. That'll either slow down the Hyena and or reveal where all the negatives are so that GT can avoid them. So, and then the GT going second, she could use that information to her benefit. So they don't want to repeat a game two, so they'll probably just stay at home for the first turn. Um, so, yeah, probably. They could maybe have Hyena whirlpool into this fog bank. Um, we'll see about that. Could be an option. You might actually try that. Uh, okay. So, so that's their home island. They're gonna place the GT fleet, I think, in the southwest. Um, I think that'd probably be best. They know they're probably gonna be coming with Hidden Cove, nearest Wild Island. Yeah, yeah, southeast. Either way, it's it's gonna come down to the distribution, I think. Uh, in the first round or two, and maybe the whole game, potentially, as a result. So I think we'll go in the southeast. Patagonia, put in that corner here, basically. Port du Lyon, and start probably right there. Looks fine. And then GT, I think she can determine where she'd hidden cove based on where she'll dock. So to this island, it's a little more than 3L. And then she goes here it's like 3l yeah so she can determine which island she'll hidden cope to based on her docking location um since they're going second they don't know if hyena might end up exploring this island on the first turn um or this one i mean really she should explore any of them with the whirlpool setup she can easily get through the whirlpool micron to explore another one they don't know that the Dragon Fleet is not planning to do that. So, um, it's probably gonna dock in the south, actually. It's a hidden cove here. Um, it's always gonna come down to this treasure mix, I think, personally. Um, I mean, last game we saw that kind of a relatively even mix can result in a pretty good, tight, close game where the distribution isn't the only factor that determines who wins. So, um, Grand Temple isn't too worried about it either way. Yeah, I think she'll start down here. Um, yeah, it's just which island is gonna have better coinage, basically. So we'll find that out pretty soon. All right, so placing crew. I'm gonna go with the same plus five, of course, on Patagonia and both fleets. So now I feel like UPS just has to decide if they should change their plus five contributions at all. Um, I'm thinking no, but it's tough. I don't think Becalmed would help. If they use Hidden Cove, they'll end up in the east. They don't want to use Hidden Cove though, because they're not, they don't plan to explore on the first turn anyway. So, um, so I think Aina might just keep her Captain Explorer Oarsman combo they've been going with, most likely. Uh, it's almost debatable what they should really do with those five points at this point in the tournament. If they should bring in like some gold runners, they could bring in like the Banshee's Cry or something. I don't know if they should change part of their strategy. Um, I just don't want them to get desperate though. And they did just win a game. So it's really debatable. Because whatever you do, you weaken Hyena if you do something else with a plus five. She is a pretty good hybrid. Um, I think they'll stick with it with Hyena. Um, she can be a solid gold runner if uh, 
she has the time to make something happen. So I've already talked to him from the previous games about why be calmed. It's not a really good option for them. Since there's so many oarsmen in the other fleet, they can just load up oarsmen. Um, and then, yeah, I think, I think they'll probably stick with the same crew. Yeah, they'll, they'll just stick with the same uh, Captain Explorer Oarsman, based down on Hyena. And then player two is in their crew, plus five Bratley. I'm gonna bring in the same stuff as usual. So, based down Explorer on the Grand Temple, and each best Grand Temple, and then Oarsman. One English on core to start, and an English and a French on the home island to start. And then I think instead of Jolly Mon, I think they're going to bring in divers again. I don't think Jolly Mon is going to be of a lot of use to them. So they'll bring in divers for their second event, in addition to Hidden Cove that they already had in their starting 40. So now we get to placing treasure. So we're going to go with the same five and three combos for the fleets that you've probably seen either in the fleet descriptions on PSM list, which will be on linked in the descriptions or in the previous games of this tournament. So five negatives, nasty ones for the Dragon Fleet, and then five positives with the wipers and eliminators for HMS GT UPS. All right, we are ready to start game four, the T3 finals. Chess clock not in any condition, right clock for the Dragon Fleet, because uh, they're eastwards of the other fleet and player one, so start things off here and uh, I think they're probably not going to do anything. Um, hyena, the only question is Hyena whirlpooling and the second action with Micron to go into the fog. That way she's in better position to hit GT if she gets a good fog hole. I think she's going to do that actually because if she gets if GT hidden copes here and Hyena gets a six or a one she could be in some shooting range. So, so she's gonna try that. I think they should do something at least. <clears throat> so they didn't do anything going first in game one. They lost that one. That was based on the distribution, but whatever. So they're gonna go through this whirlpool, see if they take damage on a high roll. Nope, safe. And then they're gonna use Micron on Patagonia and go into this fog bank and revealing the Helmsman on Hyena. They needed that to get to that first Whirlpool. And uh, Angelica should just stay put, stay safe, be ready to attack next round, and they're gonna end their turn there. So I've got GT UPS, flips the Hidden Cove event. <clears throat> so Grand Temple, this is the nearest unexplored wild island. I don't know if that's where she's gonna dock. Let me think about this. So now they see this potential threat, so they are able to anticipate if Hyena gets a nice roll, could be big because normally only Angelica or Hyena can attack Grand Temple because there's only one Micron in the enemy fleet. But now, if Hyena gets a good roll out of the Fog Bank, she might be able to get cannons in range uh, with without Micron assistance. So that could be big. So Hy yeah, Grand Temple is probably gonna dock in the other. She's probably gonna dock somewhere down there. Or redock there, I guess I should say. So, um, yeah, cause she wants to see what this is, and then I guess if it's poor, you know what? She might dock over here and then use her second action to redock in the south. Let me think about this real quick. Yeah, let me think about this. Because then, if it's bad, but she wants to stay at this island, she could go over there or. Something weird. There's something, something weird could happen where she might actually want to go in the fog as well. So she's gonna use Hidden Cove to dock like that, and then she's going to basically she's gonna reveal her Helmsman, which is not a surprise, of course. She's gonna redock like that. So she's in range of the fog bank. If she loses Captain Jack Sparrow but gains a coin, kind of similar to the last game. So. Okay, so flip Helmsman, flip Explorer, and keep CJS face down for now. And so with that redocking, we're gonna see what the distribution holds. So, oh wow, crazy. No negatives. Uh, Parada Codex, 
356. So, okay, they are overjoyed with that result. No negatives. So Prada Codex eliminates all face-up treasure. There is none face-up, so it just goes out of the game. You remove it after uh, after using it. Like double check sometimes just to make sure. So when revealed, remove all face-up treasure from the game, and then such a unique treasure change the value of a treasure coin that regain coin regains its printed value. Um, actually, not seeing it saying that it should go out of the game, which is interesting. So I'm gonna actually check that in one of the databases. I don't remember that. Okay, no. I wonder if I, I think I've been doing this wrong. Just to be honest. The only question is, does it own the itself? So I think it, I think it would actually. Um, I th yeah, I think I'm gonna rule it, it that way. So, I thought these removed themselves, like the revealers, but I'm not seeing that be the case of the ability text. Uh, so, but it says, I think it would remove itself. So, I might have actually asked this on the rules thread a while back. Just to be consistent with how I've done it throughout the tournament, and because I think it, it probably should re re uh, remove itself, so I'm going to throw it out. Um, otherwise, it could be like a good sack fodder for a whirlpool. Just sitting on a ship is like a token you could throw away, uh, or throw away in a boarding party. <laughs> but anyway, so I'll keep it consistent. And now we've got six, five, and three. So GT is going to trade the six for face down English oarsman, and. I'll end the explore action. She, uh, Cora de Leon, explores the home island, flips Maurice Aristide. They have eight gold, so six gets plussed up. Grand Temple loads the face down oarsman, flipping it face up so it doesn't take up car space. That's a free action, you get a free transfer. And now GT, she does not want to go into the fog bank. She wants to trade home a coin to another coin to the core. So she's gonna redock using Micron for her second full action. And now she's going to trade home the five. Or, so right before that core, as a free action loads the English Oarsman from the home island. Now the five is traded for that Oarsman, which the GT doesn't have room for, so it goes to the island. Core's already been given an action, so she just sits there with the coin. And that will end the turn for GT UPS. And now the Dragon Fleet uh, is probably screwed. Their writing is on the wall that they need to interrupt UPS because they have to assume that that coin will get them to win. Partly because earlier in the series, both fleets have seen the entire enemy fleet's distribution. And although the entire treasure distribution is modifiable from game to game, uh, it's a good bet for GT or for the Dragon Fleet to assume the GT UPS is still going 663 on their treasures. So, unless this is that three, they'll win with this next, uh, with this next, or no, they won't, sorry, my bad. Unless it's a six, they won't win with this next coin. So I guess they don't have to interrupt it, but they still might want to as soon as possible. Partly because they don't think they're gonna get 15. <laughs> um, so they kind of struggle to get treasure by comparison. It's mostly just the killer fleet, so. Um, so, so if this is a six, they could win with two coins, but, but it might not be. The, the other problem though is that, uh, they could trade a coin home next turn. They don't know, Dragonfleet doesn't know what this is, but the, the Kevin Jack Sparrow could trade that home to Patagonia next turn, even for Micron, um, and then the Patagonia could unload that. So, so, and then they can actually calculate that. They kind of see the writing on the wall that it's probably over, um, or at least it will be unless they interrupt this. So the, the, the way they can calculate it is knowing that in the previous distributions, the only coins worth value were six, six, three, five, five, five. So best case scenario, that has to be a five. If there's only one three, 
um, the best case scenario is this is a five because they, they see that they left. Well, best case scenario, this is jailhouse dog, actually. That's a good point. They can hope that this is jailhouse dog purposely left on the island. So that's the one, I think that's the only UT in the distribution right now. It's not uh, automatically face up. So they could hope this is jailhouse dog and this is either a five or a three. They, well, they don't know it's not a six. That's the other problem. They have to, I think they have to try to interrupt this because with nothing revealed, they don't know that this isn't a six. And if it is, it's about to be 16 nothing on the next round and it's over. So, and that's the tournament. <laughs> so, um, so they really got to try to interrupt core, which means they'd have to give Angelica can't ram and uh, she can't shoot, of course, at the ship dock at the Tome Island. So they'd have to give it to Hyena. I don't know if she can even, she can get there. Yeah, she can get there pretty easily actually to ram. So I guess that's what they'll probably start with. So based on that analysis, Hyena is going to come out of the fog bank and go through a whirlpool. So she gets a three. So she already, she didn't get a good roll to hit GT anyway. She'd have to get like a six or a one or maybe a five. So she got the, she got a bad roll anyway, but that just makes her decision even easier. So one action to come through the whirlpool. So she's coming to the Southwest to invade the Grand Temple Fleet's home waters. Roll for damage on the whirlpool. Uh, takes damage. She'll lose uh, probably Explorer, I suppose. Doesn't want to lose a mast. I think she'd rather keep the Oarsman than the Explorer right now, I'd say. So she'll lose the face down Explorer. Micron on the Patagonia up in the north to give her a uh, move action again. She is in ramming range, so it'd be crazy if she got a one, got a but she's got to go for it. Because um, right now, Kaur has to either, if she loses the boarding, she has to lose the coin or Aristide, because Aura can't be eliminated unless the ship she's on sinks. So, okay, so ram roll, Let's see what happens here. Big roll, and it's a six. So that takes out the core's mast. And now we'll get to the boarding in a second. Um, that means that the, as a result of that, the, the hyena is not pinned. So that's after, that applies after the ram. That means our ability won't come into play. So, um, okay. So, yeah, unless the enemy ship becomes derelict from being around, the ship automatically becomes pinned, but it did become derelict, so. Okay. So funny enough, I guess a face, face up oarsman could result in a pin, even on a one master. I don't think I've thought about that before, but anyway, food for thought for another game. And so we'll get to the boarding. Hyena is eager to board. So we'll go black for Hyena, red for core, just to keep the three colors the same. Um, so here we go. This could be pretty funny. Uh, no bonuses for either ship. So just a straight up roll. So Hyena wins uh, seven to f or six to four. Six to four. So now they've got a core has to either give up the coin to the Hyena or kill Aristide because Aura can't be eliminated unless her ship sinks. So let me think about the logistics of this a little bit. Um, they know that Angelica can't get Micron now to hit Grand Temple. So Grand Temple will be able to uh, fling this three home on this next turn. If they keep Aristide, that can be plussed up to five total, which would give them 13. Or if they kill, if they let Aristide die, they kind of unload the five for 13 as well, so it's kind of, uh, it's kind of iffy. Might not matter that much. Um, nice thing is, Grand Temple could actually, she could actually Whirlpool, or probably, I guess she would just sail home. Yeah, she could just come home and uh, attack. I forgot to flip CJS, but anyway. Um, she could come home and attack the Hyena. Yeah, I think they'd rather give up the coin, I think. They don't really think Hyena's gonna be able to get it home. So and then they'll preserve Aristide. Get this plus two. Because Kaur can still explore the home island when derelict. So if she gives up the coin, it'll be on Hyena and still in this area. And uh 
So versus Grand Temple, can then trade home. Core would like to repair, but she might, she's probably gonna unload instead. Trying to explore to unload. And then either Micron would either give a repair action to Core, get her mass back up, or Grand Temple would get an action. So, uh, yeah, either way. They could also go for Broke and try to find another six, but I think it's too risky because the other islands could, the other islands are gonna have the negatives because now they know that five negatives are spread out between those three islands. So the risk of those islands has gone up now that the first one has been a good island. So, um, yeah, giving up the coin for Aristide. I think I'm gonna keep Aristide. They're gonna let the coin go to Hyena. Put that on a deck plate. Um, yeah, they're gonna do that. I'm gonna keep Aristide. And then, actually, maybe not, because then the five would be worth. Well, no, see, it's just you know, five either way. Never mind. Yeah, they'll give up the coin. Let's see what happens. <laughs> and let's see. So Angelica doesn't have a good play here because she doesn't have Micron assistance. So I don't think she's going to go anywhere. She can block Grand Temple, but that's just going to put her in harm's way to get slammed. So she's just going to she's going to stay put at the home island. So they're going to end their turn there. And GTUPS, they need to trade this three home, I think, and then unload it with Aristide, and then figure out what to do with the next action. Um, Hyena won't be pinned either way, so she could actually... Oh, Hyena can't get to the Whirlpool one move, though, now. So that's actually it's a good thing for them. She didn't use both just to get through. So... They probably wouldn't give her Micron, actually. They might give it to Angelica, I'm thinking. Um, yeah, Grim Temple. Yeah, I think they're going to increase their score here. Yeah, I think that's probably the best move. Um, Core could re... She could repair and then ram, re-ram Micron assistance, but I don't think that's really... I don't think that makes... I don't think that's the best move, so... Um, yeah, doubtful. Yeah, so Core is going to load up its uh, face down French Wordsman via free transfer rule. And just going to temple. It's going to redock and basically explore this island again. So CGS now sends home the three to Core for this face down French Wordsman. And now the core is given an explore action targeting the home island to unload it for five total. So now that three becomes visible to the enemy fleet. So they were hoping it was a jailhouse dog. Of course, they know this is a five now. So they see that they just, uh, that ram, they did need that or else um, the enemy fleet would have been able to unload with core, send home a coin. Micron to core to unload that and other coin. So they did avert disaster temporarily by stealing that coin. So the uh, problem is I don't know if they'll even get it home. So, okay. So now we've got Micron to figure out whether he should go to Grand Temple or core. So core could repair. It won't cause a pin, of course. Um, she's a little bit worried about getting captured. Aina could capture her. But then she won't be able to... Yeah, there is a weird situation here. Aina could capture Kawar, and then Angelica could get Micron to slam the temple and also maybe block her, I think. I think she could go like right off the fort bow and block temple from being able to get through Whirlpool. And then Angelica's attack, if it hits four times, it would kill Jack Captain Jack Sparrow. Probably not gonna get all four hits though. So, um, so some interesting options here. I don't like the thought of Core getting captured. We saw an HMS GTUPS ship get captured in game three, and that proved to be disastrous for them. So, I think they're gonna repair, partly because with only one action left, Grand Temple can't get to Hyena. And she can't really get anywhere that's gonna be all that useful. She can't get home, she can't explore another island, she can't get to this fog bank. Um, 
Um, you know what? Maybe. Uh, I think I'm still going to repair core though. So if she was here, she probably could have gone one, two, three when she redocked and then go in there with next action to stay safe. But they almost want to bait Angelica into attacking anyway. So yeah, they like their chances. Um, plus, if if Grand Temple hides in the fog bank, Angelica definitely won't get my croc. And then Hyena will and might be able to capture Cordulium anyway. She might this turn anyway if she re-rams and then uses the second action to capture. So I'm gonna, they don't want Core to get captured. So they're gonna use Micron. This is very debatable, but they're gonna use Micron to repair the Core's mast. So it doesn't cut a pin, but obviously now she's not there. So we're gonna try that. Now we're gonna turn it over, see what the other fleet does. Dragon fleet, uh, I think, yeah, they're probably gonna use Angelica against the Grand Temple now. Um, they need to catch up somehow. They're way behind. Hyena's got the five, but uh, it's not going to be enough. They really need to hit Grand Temple with Angelica, I think. If they don't, uh, Grand Temple can go through this whirlpool and then explore any of the other three wild islands. Hyena cannot explore a wild island right now because she's not within one move action of the whirlpool, so she wouldn't be able to. Oh, she lost her explorer too, so it's worth mentioning. So I'm just gonna take like two full rounds to explore an island from where she is right now, I think. So there is a good chance that if GT explores one of these three, she gets negatives, but she might get, oh yeah, she didn't find um, Karmic Idol either. She found the Codex, but there's Karmic Idol still out here. So if that's found, so there's like whatever, 33% chance of finding that at any of these islands. So then, um, if she finds that on one of the islands, she can just wipe the negatives with that, and then they immediately trade home anything worth value to Core, and they would win. Um, so there is the option of giving Micron to Aina again to re-ram Core and then capture her. The risk there is losing the ram roll, basically rolling a one and not dismasting the Core with the ram, which is just a horrific outcome. Um, at that point, I guess the one benefit there is at that point they could still use Angelica to hit Grand Temple hard. Because then Micron, you could you could see how the hyena does. If she gets the ram, maybe she Yeah, see I don't think so. Because hyena's gonna get blasted on the way back. Even if hyena gets the ram, that kinda makes it seem like she should capture Kaur right away with Micron. Because if she doesn't, Kaur's just going to repair the mask again next turn. And then Grand Temple's probably going to win her long-term battle against Angelica, and then they'll be down the dragon. Um, versus, yeah. Um, so basically I'm saying, like, if, if Hyena does get the ram, and then she captures Kaur, Angelica doesn't have Micron, to go after Temple now, which leaves Temple, the key is that leaves Temple free to go nuts on Hyena, which she would. So she'd be in this, probably go through the whirlpool, I think, or maybe just move. Either way, ah, she'd probably just move. Either way, um, let me think how this would work. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know how many guns would be in range, but I think she'd have at least three or four Hyena would get pretty well smashed up I think so so I think they're gonna use Angelica to try to really try to nullify Jimena's Grand Temple as much as possible um, and then maybe have Hyena just move away so they got to make that decision now so if Hyena yeah I don't think they should ram Kaur again because even if they use Micron to capture her this turn I think it's gonna be really hard to get her home and make it all work properly so yeah they need two microns basically they need angelica to hit grand temple now and capture core because now they're, they're so far behind it's gonna be hard to catch up against 13 uh so so yeah i think i'll do this i just gotta think about that's the other thing the the gt fleet they only need one more coin to win so 
they're at 13, only a three would do it. So if they, if they let GT run wild, whether it's on Hyena or exploring one of these three, um, she could either crush the Hyena or get core back and stuff, steal the five from Hyena somehow, and then, or explore one of these, and as soon as she sends one home, even if it's sent home to Patagonia in exchange for Micron Patagonia, um, could unload it next turn potentially with a win. So I think all signs point towards using Angelica aggressively here. So she's going to fly somewhere just off the port bow of Grand Temple. So it can't ram, but she can get into a position where, oh, something like this. Yeah, you can put her wherever. As long as it's not touching, I think. Oh, that's disgusting. She can like totally block her bow. That's almost like, you can't, almost can't maneuver. I don't think I've ever maneuvered a sea dragon like this. Grand Temple has to basically go due south with her first S to get out of there. So dragon is basically munching on her, uh, her port bow area. So, okay. So Micron to give Angelica uh, a second action. So we're going to see the dragon unleash its power here, as we've seen in the past. So 2L for the red, 3L for the white. And the black ones are going to be the three S's. So, here we go. All four. Trying to eliminate cargo. Okay. Not good. Looks like one. So these missed. This was the three L. So only the two L hit. So a disastrous result. It'll probably seal the deal for a GT UPS win, honestly, if I'm going to predict it. So, only one hit. That's going to take out one cargo which GT is really not, not displeased by. Captain Jack Sparrow breathes the sigh of relief. The explorer dies, and they uh, should be good to go. Actually, no, the Orthman dies, sorry, because they can just load another one. They'll keep the Ur Explorer, so still, they'd like to get another coin home. So, um, that's messy. So now, Hyena is probably gonna get out of there. She could re-ram, but Core is just going to repair again. So, and if she re-rams, she might lose the boarding party. Core de Leon is an open cargo space, so she could she could take that five back. So Hyena's going to get out of there. Uh, I don't really think she should go towards this one. Because Grand Temple, with two actions, she might use the first to dispatch the dragon. And then the second, I think her first S, one, probably two, three, yeah four, five, six. She can cover this whirlpool, but not kind of over here with two actions. Because she won't be able to reach this whirlpool with her first, the way Angelica is positioned. So, so Hyena is going to hightail it out of here, but she's going to have to go a bit northwards. She can't shoot at Kaur. And then, of course, it could get even, even worse if they ram and roll a one. It just make for one of the worst turns of the whole tournament in that case. All right, so she's going to head up there. Hopefully that's good enough distance away. I'm not going to pre-measure it. If it's not, I might move her away. So she moved there and pre-measured, but whatever. So, um, okay. So that's their three actions. So that's all they can do. Does not look good for them at all. And now GT is going to dispatch this dragon here. First, she's going to load uh, face down oarsman. She flips face up immediately so it doesn't take up space. She gets an oarsman replacement. And now she's going to go after the dragon at full tilt. And she'll have, I think this is a new high, at least for this series, where she has got, I think she's got five cannons to return fire with. Usually she has less than that and still makes do pretty well with less. But now she's got almost a full broadside to just absolutely devastate uh, Angelica. So these cannons are a bit more accurate. We got four 2Ls. So I'll go, I got three reds and a white. So those are going to be the two L's. All right, no, let's not, uh, I'm going to switch the dice around. I don't know, I don't have enough reds. So I'm going to go, I mean, I'll go four, four black ones for the two L's. And then the three S at the bow should be white. So I'll do that one, white. So, so five shots, trying to kill Angelica. HMS Grand Temple, huge broadside. Oh God, okay. So three hits. So I should probably stick around to finish it off rather than going after a hyena. So those are the three S's that missed. 
L's, uh, or two L's, sorry. Uh, but they miss, and then three hits. That three S got a four, so they're good there. And then one, two, three, yeah. I think, I don't think they'd have enough in range of Hyena. So Hyena will be able to get home with that five, which is annoying. Um, I think it's worth it to just end it, or end the dragon here. It'd be so nice if they had one more hit. But, look, they're okay with three. It's, they're content with that. I'm just going to pre-measure. Yeah, she doesn't go... The wings are not in the way. She can go underneath a little bit. So, yeah, she'd only have maybe one... I think only one in range of Hyena. So, she'll uh, stick in this area. She'll move, but not too far, I think. And reshoot with all five. So, um, let me see. Um... It looks like Hyena... Well, she lost a crew. They don't know which one she lost, but... Um, Hyena still is her captain. The English... The GT doesn't know that, but she can assume that could be a problem. Yeah, actually, she might pretty much stay there. Hyena with Micron could get in range to attack with her captain, but... Uh, I don't know that she will. Probably not. Um, yeah, that's going to be a losing battle. <laughs> Most likely. I mean, depends on... Actually, that ma that really matters. Because if Hyena can get in range with all three cannons for her first action, I don't think she can. Let's see. Um, that would actually be a problem for the GT. Because the GT could be, like, sunk. If she, Hyena gets really lucky, but... Nah, she'll only have... She'll have, like, none in range. Never mind. If GT stays there. So I think GT is going to move, you know, half a millimeter. And just move and shoot again. So here we go. Same dice, five shots, uh, just need one hit to kill the dragon, so another another devastating broadside, so, yep, so that'll do it, so technically three hits, but you need, need one, and Angelica is killed once again, and GT's firepower is overpowering, so I'll end the dragon. So now we're back to mostly English ships in play, actually. All but one. All but the core. So, so that was Micron for GT's second action. Just a good old shoot him up here. And uh, I think that's pretty much all they're going to do. Yeah, core doesn't want to go anywhere or anything. So, all right. I'm going to turn it over. So now Hyena just has to decide. Like I measured, she can't hit... Grand Temple with with both actions. She'd have to use the second one to get in range and ram and hit. Her max damage is impressive. She could take out up to four masts and two crew, but there are a lot of problems with that. Obviously, she probably won't get that lucky. And she loses, I think she would, I think the pinning ability would apply before the boarding happens, I think. So then she might Eliminate a crew on Grand Temple that takes up space, lose the boarding party, and therefore the five to the temple. And then that would definitely be it. The key is that she can't she can't dismaster sink the temple. It's impossible. She can't do more than four total damage. So therefore, uh, it's kind of hopeless, I think. Um Yeah. She can go home. She can get this five home, but it's just not enough gold. I guess she might do that and then just hope that the GT gets a bunch of crappy UTs. I mean, since no negatives were revealed here, the Dragon Fleet also knows that the other the negative UTs would be on the other islands. So they might use that to their advantage. Like Hyena could she could uh explore this with her first action here, but that's really risky. As soon as they get plagued, they're done. They gotta play the long game and hope GT gets just completely waylaid by negative UTs that are still out there. And that's very possible. So it'd be it's still gonna be really hard to claw their way back against 13 on the enemy home island. But they gotta at least give themselves a chance at it. Because if Hyena goes off and explores here, any she could explore any of them. It's whirlpool to the east. But as soon as she gets slammed, it's gonna get ugly. And then Grand Temple can come for her. She wants to get the five home because the Grand Temple, that's a good point actually. The five is a more juicy target for the Grand Temple right now than any of the islands. GT knows, see, Captain Jack Sparrow, he knows that these other islands could get pretty nasty. So the hyena is actually where she actually wants to board the hyena and capture 
uh, capture the ship or take the coin. So she doesn't have a space open for it right now, but whatever, she could figure that out or just capture the ship. So, so yeah, so a hyena is going to go home. They saw all that. She should just get the heck out of here. Hope that GT gets some horrible UTs. Uh, preserve this coin, basically. So uh, roll for damage on the whirlpool. Nothing. Finally gets lucky. She had some whirlpool problems last game. So a hyena gets Micron for her second action. So she is able to dock just like that. And they've got five, so they won't be shut out at least. It's going to be a long uphill battle. But at least they got that. And now they're going to turn it over. Uh, GT UPS can't get that five now. So they're going to might as well go explore. It's always risky, so they might as well just, we'll just pick an island. I don't know which yet. Um, oh yeah, they got the divers event too, so they could have could sink hyena and get that coin but whatever so yeah they don't have any crew to swap at the home island but that's okay they can swap aristider or micron because any gold worth value should be enough to win so they're just going to hope that they don't have cgs get eliminated by plague or missionary before they can send a coin home with him so that's that's going to be that's, the distribution will determine if the game is going to end this turn or not <laughs> um so there's probably a better island to go to than the others. They're not too worried about whirlpool damage. Um, they could go here and avoid whirlpooling to get to an island this turn. But they do like how this fog bank is within one move action of this island and this island. But it's, uh, it's not in range of one move action of this island. So just in the case of negative UTs and wanting to hide in fog with a coin or something from Hyena, I don't know. So I think this is the, this is the closest island to this fog bank, so I think they're going to go there. So we're going we're gonna to see what happens there. Uh, so whirlpooling, one action, the Grand Temple, damage happens. So um, I think she'll lose a mass. Uh, that's a tough one, actually. She's got an oarsman, but I think she wants to keep it. So, yeah, it's kind of annoying. Um, it's pretty debatable. There's no more English oarsman on the home island either. So, yeah, she's going to lose a 3S mast. It's tough to say which choice is optimal right now. So, she's still, still got some durability. So, they're going to now dock at that island, a certain spot, so that they're in range of the whirlpool. Actually, kind of like I've done in the past, I'm going to go straight in. So then she could go port or starboard. But if she comes in like this, she's only... Hyena could double action and basically position herself here. And then Grand Temple is really going to struggle to reach the Whirlpool with one action. So she's actually going to go straight in based on the movement logistics. And she's still got her Explorer. So here we go. Treasure distribution. Okay, Pirate Globe Missionary six jailhouse dog so not what they wanted but it's it's not horrible uh they're gonna lose cjs it looks like globe is gonna flip everything and then the missionary yeah yeah it's not the best i would have liked to find the karmic idol with the missionary but that's okay so pirate globe when revealed turn all treasure on all wild lands face up the game and remove pirate globe from the game yeah, they don't have anything to eliminate. So basically, Jailhouse Dog, since it's loaded face down, you have to load it in order to use it. I've asked Wolf this in the past. So they can't, since you apply face up UTs first, you have to apply both of these before you load Jailhouse Dog. Therefore, you can't use the dog immediately to interrupt the missionary and cancel it. So um, so these two has to have to happen first. So in that case, they'll apply the Pirate Globe first, just to see stuff. Um, Okay, Southeastern Island, all UTs, Maps of Alexandria, Natives, Karmic Idol, and Wolves. So that one's kind of a weird, messy mix. So there's some treasure here. A couple fives, Plague, and Savage Natives. Wow. Okay. Well, all told, they may have gone to the right island in the long-term view of things. Because in the... Yeah, this one, this one is ugly. Uh, so they would just lose all their crew. And then they wouldn't be able to flip a five home. They'd be able to, or they wouldn't be able to load it because Plague would kill the, kill the explorer 
first. So Plague versus Savage Natives would be a weird timing interaction, I feel like, personally. But um, And then in the southeast, you've got the idol to wipe all the neck to wipe everything. Yeah, they would do the maps of Alexandria first, then use the idol. So then that would free up this, this island nicely. And this one. But then they wouldn't have anything to trade home. So they'd still be... Basically, no matter what island they go to, they could have gone to. None of the three would result in a win this turn, as far as I can tell. So, so that's kind of interesting and kind of cool. So the game will keep going. Um, so, yeah, so the globe eliminates itself now. Missionary um, will take out CJS before he can warp any coin stones. So missionary remove all crew on the ship from the game and then remove missionary from the game. So they're not even eliminated. They're just removed. We'll move them off the GT's deck plate. So no more crew. Uh, missionary gets tossed out. Uh, that does... Okay, so that, that eliminates the... Or not eliminates, but it, it removes the explorer. So that's that's the main problem with that happening, because they can't load the others now. So her the explorer action in the code is actually a really good thing to know. It has to do with the explorer action order of operations as well. But the code talks about if explorer action fried by an explorer crew and that crew is eliminated or removed by UT, you must resolve the other ones. An additional explorer action will be required to load any other treasure or cargo from the island onto the ship. So, um, so he applies the face up. You'll need another explorer just to just to grab those. So, so not a great not a great result. Um, I guess the southeast would have been the best island, because then they at least free up the other coins and uh, don't lose their crew. The other two islands, they lose their crew, so so not the best, not the worst. I think this would probably still be a worse island, but either way, neither northern island is friendly to them right now. So, but so they've dealt with the missionary, and Kaur has not been given an action. I think she's gonna stay put. It's pretty debatable um, what she should do. Uh, so. It's going to be interesting to see how the other fleet plays this now, too. So, Core, she could, she could head off in search of stuff, but I think she's probably going to try to stay docked for now. Um, this island's not going to go too well for her, realistically. And then she could whirlpool over here to free up some of that. But I think this is going to come down to GT. Actually, I think I think Core might set out. Yeah, she should. I just realized. She, well, or if she should protect Patagonia. Let me think about this for a second. Since CGS is gone, they can't trade Core. That removes one of her uses, and also they only need one more coin to win. So if either Grand Temple or Core or Patagonia, uh, if any of them can unload anything worth value. Any of the coins left will give them more than half starting treasure. Um, I think the I think the reason they might keep core here is because <laughs> we saw how devastating last game it was when Hyena was able to come through and attack Patagonia. So I think they might keep her docked. Um, I think Hyena can reach. They might do that actually. Hyena I think can reach uh, this Patagonia with one action after whirlpooling so they could hit her on their turn um so i think because of that they're gonna just redock core they're gonna reposition her a little bit she's gonna move s and s to redock right there and that'll end the gt ups turn all right so we'll see what the dragon fleet does with hyena here so she could come through ram patagonia try to kill off Bradley. Um Actually, we already talked about how GT UPS can see that as a possibility. Um, actually, they're going to keep Micron aboard because they would just eliminate Bradley and boarding party. So, and Ransom, Ransom was big last game, but I think with this gold differential, thirteen to five, I don't think it's going to be as big a deal. So, so Hyena, she could come through and blast the temple. I think she probably should, especially because Temple has no crew. I think she should risk it. She could go here and have the idol wipe all the negatives in the jailhouse dog, but I think that just makes it easier for Core 
just slip through and get a five or something like that. So, um, Hyena is kind of power in the game though now. Now with GT down crew, she's got nothing left. So, um, it's also a weird play where Hyena is able to build a fort. Um, that could be, that could be a move. She's lost her explorer, so she can't explore. Oh, that's actually huge. So since she's lost her explorer, she can't come through and explore one of these islands on this turn. I have to wait. I think that, yeah, I think that encourages her to come here and hit the temple. She could go after the enemy's uh, Patagonia for that ransom, but I don't think it's gonna, it's never gonna be enough anyway. They gotta play for bigger gold than they did last game. They gotta get to at least 13. So I think they're going to attack the temple. I think that's their best play. They can't explore an island. I don't think they should go after Ransom. I don't think they should go after the Corps du Leon either. Especially with CJS gone. They can't trade to her anyway. So yeah, we're going to see a battle here. Hyena versus HMS Grand Temple. Hyena's going to come out probably on this side to try to block off that fog bank a bit. And she's going to come and come over and dock. So let's roll for whirlpool damage first. See if Hyena gets it. Okay, she, yeah, she takes damage. Uh, she needs all her shots right now. She's going to lose her face down oarsman. So that's too bad, but that's what happens. You whirlpool all the time. So she's going to flip her captain. We'll need that in a moment. Aina, she's still got Captain Helmsman, so I guess she's got a... Oh, yeah, she wanted to dock at the island, so she might explore it next turn and maybe build a fort to try to extend the game because she might be able to be the combat dominator here at the end we'll see but the problem is she can't without the explorer grand temple would be able to explore first no matter what so she might as well ram to increase her damage output if she rams which she is right now she's at least got a chance at taking out all three mass uh, or all four sorry on temple so i'm gonna see a big shoot action here hopefully she'll do better than angelica that's what the dragon fleet has to hope for uh, so a couple three S's and a two L. So we'll go black. Uh, yeah, let's go black for the three S's and two L as red. Um, so move, shoot, ram, board. Let's see what happens. Oh man! All right, only one for three. So one for three. The two L missed for the one. It's painful, but um, we'll have we'll have a boarding roll here. So they need higher than a three or a ram. Sorry, that's the ram comes before boarding of course I was thinking ram just said it wrong <laughs> so um, make sure these are touching that was not higher than a three so they only basically went one for four on the damage that's not good that's not good at all um, so their luck is evaporating quickly both with the treasure distribution the train roll their gun rolls are crap today so it's not looking good for hyena here uh, I think they'll, they'll probably, or no, they won't board. Ah, uh, yeah, there's no point. The Grand Temple doesn't have anything. They're just trying to, they were trying to make her derelict. But it's not going to work. Or at least win the battle. If they got her down to one, they could win the battle in the long term, even if Grand Temple shoots back twice. But now they won't win the battle, I don't think. Um, they'll decline to board. Uh, Grand Temple will board because she has nothing to lose. So Grand Temple, red, uh, starts at 3 3, neither. Neither ship has any bonuses. 5-5 uh, five, five tie, nothing happens. That was weird. 5-5 five, five, and then the dice hit the fives that were on the island. It's like four fives. Anyway, so, and the, the hyena, her ability doesn't come into play because there's no crew to eliminate on Grand Temple anymore. So, uh, <laughs> that didn't work. But, like I said, I think it was their best play. Especially because they couldn't explore anywhere right now anyway. So, yeah. I don't know if their second best play would be to go dock here. But then on the GTUPS turn, Grand Temple would explore, get both of those coins loaded. Um, and then you know what? She would probably flip the jailhouse dog when this island is explored, cancel the idol, because then she has the six, that's the winning treasure. She would actually probably use the dog to cancel the idol because they don't even care about getting that anymore. I don't know, maybe not, but <laughs> it's crazy. I think this is a lose-lose for Dragonfleet, I don't know. It's too much to come back from. 
down 13 to nothing earlier on. So they're going to end their turn. Used up both actions. Now, uh, we see HMS Grand Temple. Probably just go nuts right here. I think she should just shoot back in full. All six shots, probably. Um, she could explore. Well, we'll see how the first shoot action goes. Um, yeah, there's no there's no oarsman on Hyena. Both crew are face up, Captain Helmsen. So if she hits three for three, she might explore with the second action. But um, this is, looks this looks like a no-brainer. No captain or explorer, so she doesn't need to you know, build to move and then shoot. So um, okay, so Grand Temple, three two L shots going against Hyena. So here we go. Need higher than threes. Whoa, uh, it's only one hit. That was destructive. The roll was more destructive than the shots were. So, or that was, uh, so that was, it was two L's, so it was two hits. So, yeah, my bad. The three does hit on the two L, of course. So two hits. Uh, they'll just shoot again. Micron for another, another blast, another crack at it. Try not to wreck the whole setup here. <laughs> Go kind of a little bit farther out. Okay, only one more. So, she does get the three hits total she needs. So one, two, three, only one for three on the second shoot action, but she is able to dismast Hyena and she doesn't have any oarsmen, so she is derelict. So, and then last action for the turn, Kaur will set out. Now there's not much to oppose her. So she's gonna, I don't know, she might not get very far, but we'll just go there for now. Um, probably because the game's gonna end soon, so. Now, other fleet uh, is pretty much out of options. They gotta try to use their Patagonia now. Hyena is derelict and can't do anything. So they're gonna, uh, I guess they'll not scuttle her just in case Grand Tumble doesn't capture her. Uh, they only have one ship left, so they're gonna sail their Patagonia out. <laughs> so <laughs> that's when you know that the game is desperate. When one fleet only has the only action they can deal with is Patagonia trying to salvage the gold somehow. Uh, it's not going to work, but whatever. All right, so Grand Temple, first action. Re explore this island, load up Jailhouse Dog in the six. And um, second action, she's going to capture Hyena. At the start of her move action, she's going to immediately drop the toe. She doesn't want to be slowed down. And then she's going to move that success. And Kaur, I think, is just going to sit there. The game's about to end. Yeah, that's it. They're done. And then the other fleet is able to move Patagonia another S. And down to only one ship. So that's their turn. And then, so GTUPS turn. Grand Temple goes through the Whirlpool. And with Micron's second action, she will end tournament number three. So she docks home, unloads the six, and now they have more than half the starting gold. So they had, they already had 13 plus six is 19. So in game four, HMS GT UPS defeats Kill That UPS by a score of 19 to five. And they have now won tournament number three. So HMS GT UPS, congratulations to the fleet that wins the tournament. And uh, it was a pretty crazy uh, last couple of games here. Especially game three was kind of bizarre. But um, I think this is pretty conclusive. Three games to one, HMS GT UPS is able to defeat, kill that UPS, the Dragon Fleet. I think there's a lot uh, to, be, to be drawn, conclusions to be gained from this. I think there's a couple really key things uh, that happened. So GT UPS, their luck held. Their luck was pretty good throughout the series. So they had treasure distribution luck in, I would say, that all three of their wins, realistically. Decent luck. Not always great, but good enough. Um, so, and then the other key, I think, is that a healthy Grand Temple can just straight up defeat Angelica. Um, even if Angelica goes four for four, and kills Captain Jack Sparrow, the Grand Temple is able to win the battle potentially. And as soon as she starts, Angelica starts missing, then it's like just completely lopsided slugfest where the Grand Temple decimates the dragon. And uh, and of course, Hyena can't go toe to toe with the Grand Temple usually. 
even here with Grand Temple weak, Hyena, we finally saw Hyena go for broke and try to dismast a weakened, a very weakened Grand Temple, but she only went one for four between ramming and uh, cannon, basically one for four on damage rolls. So it didn't even work. Um, so obviously I would say in this, in this series, overall the luck was on the side of HMS GT UBS, but three, three games to one and being able to win all three games going second, uh, I think that's, that's pretty decisive. That's about as conclusive as it gets almost. And also, I think the other key, and why I'm not definitely not going to play any more matchups here, is that in the game where HMS GT UPS lost, they, they were in it the whole time, and they lost by like two gold. And they had a path to victory throughout the endgame, so they barely lost uh, in their, their only loss. And of course, when they win, it's, I mean, it's not, it's not really not close at all. So kill that UPS. I think it's best for combating uh, smaller UPS fleets. I think it's, it's probably going to always be good against Hypeng, Banshee's Cry. Um, I'm thinking it can be good against even the ones that can't be shot at while docked. Um, uh, with like Bianco's Haulers and whatnot. But as soon as it faces a UPS fleet that has like a true big gunship threat, like HMS Grand Temple, it really starts to break down. Because you need Angelica to just completely nullify UPS. But um, even if she does against this fleet, the combat capability knocks her out. And then Grand Temple is able to use whatever strength and actions she has left to, uh, to, to keep her fleet alive. So a high pang might fall quickly, or a Banshee's Cry might fall immediately to Angelica. But Grand Temple is able to take, really take a full batch of hits and just keep on going. So between her durability and her accuracy and her cheap point cost, um, she is just disgustingly good, as we already knew. But uh, this really proves that she can be an extremely competitive ship in competitive play, even not as part of a deathmatch fleet. Uh, you may have seen my HMS Grand Temple 40 point, like essentially like a deathmatch fleet with HMS London. It's done pretty well against other competitive fleets. Um, but that's just a killer fleet, almost like kill that UPS. But with that ability to use pirate crew, uh, it opens up GT to be able to use UPS with Captain Jack Sparrow. And here, that combo proved very lethal. Um, and that's the other thing. Kill that UPS is supposed to be a killer fleet, but they're often ending up with less masts in play at the end of a game. So um, that's just there's too much firepower to overcome. So even with Micron assisted dragon. Um, you kind of need the dragon to be able to like ram enemy ships to their home island. That would help a little bit or have more firepower, like five or six segments to start with instead of four. But as soon as you start missing, uh, every miss is a grand temple counterattack cannon shot. Uh, so it's, if she, if she sticks, you know, only two, one or two shots, grand temple is going to be able to return fire with a lot of force. Uh, or even if she hits three times, three cannons, times two with Micron, six 2L shots is usually pretty devastating. Even when it's not hitting all that much, it still was able to dismast Hyena and eliminate that little threat towards the end there. So, um, so overall, HMS, UT, uh, HMS GT UPS combines the best of both worlds where there's a ton of gold running capability where she's flinging home high value gold and plusing it up quickly. And then she also is one of the best gunships in the game. So it kind of reminds me of UPS-5, uh, which is a UPS version I made with the Zeus, um, which is a pretty darn good variant that uh, did extremely well in tournament number one on Vassal between myself and Xerix, and also was able to use those victories to play in uh, tournament number two as well. So another successful UPS fleet. So it'd be interesting to see those two match up. Um, I think that would mostly come down to the distribution, but it would be fun to see like a GT versus Zeus Slugfest. I don't know if I'll do that one. I will say, I know there's a few matchups I know I'm going to play this HMS GT UPS fleet against. So I'll probably play it against Ultra Abuse first, just because I think Ultra Abuse had a real good shot at winning their series against Kill That UPS. It was kind of a weird, that was a little bit of a weird series. I feel like Ultra Abuse got, I wouldn't say robbed, but I, I feel like they were, they were within one ruling and or one slightly luckier game of winning that series. So 
Um, so they're going to have them play HMSG to UPS. Uh, I think that's going to be another luck fest potentially with the treasure distribution. I just, I kind of want to see a, an old school treasure race between um, like the ultra fleet versus this one where it's not just in, the, in that way, you know, you don't go to every Island with like extreme trepidation, like, Oh God, what am I going to find? <laughs> like, you know, you can explore and just, it'll be a more of a classic like old school treasure race rather than essentially a UPS fleet facing like a deathmatch UPS counter fleet. Um, so there's a lot of conclusions to be drawn from the tournament. I'm going to either make a video or a post on Pirates of Den about that. Uh, probably it might even just be as part of the battle report, I think, for this series. And um, so you might see that below. If you're seeing this on the Pirates of Den post, you'll probably see it in that same thing. But for conclusions, um, I'll elaborate on it later. But so the UPS counters are good, but only really against... Um, well, they're good against a lot of fleets, but they they can't uh, fulfill their destiny of beating UPS when the UPS opponent has a strong gunship. So the dragon is good, the hyena is good, but if the if the enemy gun if the enemy UPS ship is also like a really good gunship, then um, they they get some get into some big trouble. So I think this dragon fleet would probably struggle against UPS five as well because the Zeus could take. A ton of hits and just return fire with brutality so um so it's kind of a tough one uh these these big gunships are a tough not for even a double action dragon to crack so um so the the ups counter fleets like kill that ups they're best against the ups fleets kind of like the older ups fleets basically that use high pang or banshee's cry they use like the cheaper gold running type ships that are super fast with captain jack sparrow um because then they can at least crush crush the main enemy ship pretty easily. Here, HBS Grand Temple, she's not going down without a fight. So she's guaranteed to fire back with at least two 2L two shots, probably four with Micron, even in a worst case scenario. So that's no joke. Um, and I think, um, obviously, you could you could gamify this and uh, run simulations where if, if GT gets less lucky, you know, she gets screwed. But that's kind of, that's kind of, Either way, the, the treasure distribution is just going to have a massive impact either way. Like if she found Plague here, all her crew die. Um, but this island would have gone pretty good if she went here first. If she had like whirlpooled over here first, um, she would have seen everything with the maps and then wiped everything out with the Karmic Idol. So then she would know where all the treasure is. And there would be nothing, nothing negative in the way to oppose her with it. Um, although that would have... It would have been interesting to see Angelica attack there, but if she only hit one for four, CGS would have it would have been similar, I think. It would have just taken a little bit longer for them to win. But um, so unless HMS GT gets like a really bad island, um, she's usually able to stay in the game at least and continue continue doing things. I think it does help her durability really helps because she can take dragon hits and then even if she loses all her crew to plague her missionary, she can stay in the game with Micron. Get double actions through whirlpool and stuff like that she can afford to lose masts through a whirlpool and uh basically become like kind of a weird treasure runner with no crew as we saw at the end of this game so overall hms gt ups uh i think this definitely cements uh that status of the fleet as one of the best fleets ever uh we'll i'll play it i don't know if it'll be a three game series or more of just a one game exhibition but i'll play it against uh ups2 which uh spoiler alert so i'll go to the Check out tournament number two and pause it if you don't want to be spoiled. But uh, uh, UPS two won tournament number two on Vassal. Uh, that that did we we had a few house rules there and it was less of a stringent uh, competitive setup with like pure standard from like start to finish in that tournament. But uh, UPS two I think would uh, potentially give this fleet a run for its money. I think it might come down to who goes first because they're both just gonna be trading coins home like like with reckless abandon um, and a treasure distribution might affect it a little bit. I think in that case, the, the GT could be the equalizer because she could smash the enemy UPS ship, high pang or whatever, and like crush her. So it's possible that HMS GT UPS is really in the top two or three fleets ever. Um, of course, for created fleets, um, who knows what better combo is out there. But for now, um, this fleet proves that, a, a UPS hard counter is uh, 
I wouldn't say it's no match for this fleet. Uh, they won a game, and they could have won more with a little more luck, but um, GT proves that the double action dragon, and even with Hyena supporting her in that combat role, it's not quite enough to, to take down. So, because even though um, kill that UPS, the, 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 this fleet, the, UP, the UPS fleet doesn't need much luck. They just need one good island, and then it's really hard to come back against their high gold score. So, because um, they start getting gold fast and early on. So, and then they just keep piling it up. And then after one or two trades, they usually only need a third, like one more coin to win. So, and we saw that here as well. So, um, feel free to check out the fleets in the description below. Thanks for watching. Um, thanks for staying tuned for tournament number three. This is not the end of the competitive play that I'll post in 2024. So you can stay tuned for some more. It will be the end of like hyper stringent, like pure standard, like hyper competitive. I'll, I'll probably keep it almost the same format for a couple matchups, maybe. I have a feeling that I'm not gonna be satisfied with just one game between this fleet, the GT fleet and UPS two. And there might be a few other matchups where I do a best of three, but, um, but mostly I'm thinking it's probably gonna be exhibition. It might also depend on luck factor and how long the games are. So if like I have a competitive matchup between like GT UPS and Ultra Abuse and it only lasts for like 15 minutes, I might play a game too just because it's convenient or um, or if there's some kind of rules problem or whatever. But, um, but overall, um, really excited about the tournament. I'm glad I was able to be consistent with it. Really happy I played all the games out. And uh, I think a lot of the conclusions come down to luck, honestly. <laughs> um, I would say the treasure distribution generally feels more important than either who goes first or um, the uh, terrain meta as well, and even the island meta. I think, if anything, I think I overrated the island meta coming in because between Hidden Cove and Whirlpools, a lot of times the island meta, like 6L versus 3L apart, things like that, and who goes first and who plays the last island, a lot of times, a lot of that doesn't end up mattering too much. Um, of course, it's a little bit of a little bit of a flawed conclusion because I did end up getting a lot of terrain rolls where there was a ton of terrain plays. So um, GT Fleet did get get the whirlpools they wanted, but even if they don't, um, GT is fast and they have hidden cove, so they're still able to um, rack up gold quickly. So I would say the treasure distribution is probably probably more important than any other part of the setup phase. Of course, that's very dependent on what's in the distribution. Here, I think part of the reason is it's such a game changer and it was such a huge deal in the first two games of the series, like a massive, I mean, it's like, if GT gets a different island in either of those games, sure, they might lose, but I mean, that's just the way it worked out. Um, so I'm not gonna play 50 games just to come to the same conclusion basically and hey, say, hey, you know, this game wins if they get the, the coins they want and then GT runs into Plague and Wolves and Savage Knaves and Missionary, like, sure, they'll lose, like, whatever. But um, but overall, I would say part of the reason it was such an extreme differentiator in some of the later series of this tournament, including this one, and the first, at least the first two games of the series, not as much the third and fourth game, it was a little more balanced uh, for these last few games. But part of the reason it's such a big problem or such a big luck swing is because of what's included. So when both fleets are going all out and you have a hyper competitive UT distribution, you're going to see the nastiest negatives in the game and you're going to see, you know, the UPS fleet is going to go all out combating those. So they're going to, there's no reason not to include all the wipers and eliminators because that's basically the best way to deal with the negatives outside of treasure trading. And uh, GT does not have the cargo space or the points in the fleet to include like a treasure trader on her without dramatically changing the, the setup of the ship and whatnot. So, um, so you end up seeing two wipers, two eliminators, and, and the dog is a contingency option. Um, so, so in this, this game, we didn't see, the codex didn't matter. It happened before stuff got flipped. So that's another thing about this, these, this matchup is GT is able to win the game without using the eliminators to wipe them. I mean, they got, they got hit with missionary. Uh, the codex didn't help. Um, and then they never found, they didn't use the karmic idol to wipe negatives and they still won easily. So I think that's yet another reason. It's a pretty conclusive result 
Uh, I guess the only other what if is, I mean, there's a million, but another one is like the plus fives in the dragon fleet. Should they have gone with something other than the hyena's crew? Um, I don't really think so. I think it's, it's just debatable. It's just, it's endless what ifs. Because then, sure, if they hidden cove, or maybe if they whirlpool, if they did whirlpool and explore this island, that would have been a decent one, I guess. Um, or if, um, if Hyena has some other crew selection, maybe she can do, I don't know, I think the crew selection is fine. Um, and she needed that captain. It would come in handy here. She just, you know, she, she missed. She only went one for four on damage shots there. So she wasn't able to win that battle against the Grand Temple. So, um, so a lot of what ifs, but it's kind of inevitable and stuff like this. So the tournament's taken long enough and I'm ready to move on and play some other random matchups and kind of complete my competitive uh, play appetite for this year in the near future in the next few months. So hope you enjoyed it all. Um, there's going to be more about tournament number three in this post once I do get the battle report up at Pirates of Ben, and I'm going to go over kind of the lessons learned. And I'm also going to calculate uh, what percentage of time a fleet won when going first. So that was one of the goals was to establish how much of an advantage that is. So I'm going to calculate all that. So you'll see the stats for that, as well as the final scores and the series scores for all the different series and matchups for the tournament. So it'll be a nice, beautiful, completed bracket with the winner, HMS GT UPS at the top, uh, winning this final series, best of five, three to one over the Kill That UPS fleet. So feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on the tournament. Um, I think question of the day, uh, I think there's a few things. I think um, I think a couple questions, I guess, what's your favorite fleet in the tournament? So there are eight um, in the tournament, plus UPS 4.1 if you wanted to go there for the, at the play and round. So I'd be curious to know your favorite or which one you think you would enjoy using the most. And second question, I guess, really theoretical, but wh which fleet do you think would win the tournament if we actually had like full power AI simulator to play every matchup like 100 games out? Um, I know it's just, I think it just becomes a luck fest with the treasure distribution and some of the early game setup roles. Um, but I think it would be interesting if that changed some of the results. I'm not so sure it would, but be interested to hear if you think uh, some fleets got the raw end of the stick here. Um, like I said, I think HMS GT UPS proved their worth here. Being able to come back, um, being able to still win this game despite missionary and uh, not always having the absolute best luck. And, uh, and also, like I said, I think it's kind of crazy. In game three, they had major problems. They lost it, but they almost won. So it's really hard to beat this fleet. So, and we'll see them a little bit more going forward, playing against some of the other best competition I've ever seen, like UPS2. So stay tuned for that. Uh, feel free to check out the comments uh, for the question of the day answers. And uh, feel free to support the YouTube channel and my site, Parts of Ben, with the affiliate links to eBay in the description below. And uh, beyond that, thanks a ton for watching. And uh, stay tuned for some more Pirate CSG game action. Ha, 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 ha.